Ramesh sir, are you here? Ramesh sir? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, I ask other participants to move to the mic. All the participants, please move to the microphone. Professor, as the number of participants is more than 100, please ask the participants in the group to join to the degree.
Hello everyone. A very good afternoon to all of you. I am Shubhadeep Chandra, coordinator of this workshop. It's my immense pleasure to welcome you all in this three-day web workshop on Android application development organized by Avi Anjan, Technical Forum of Bhutipada Institute of Management and Technology in association with Ardent Computing Private Limited. I am happy to say that we are enriched with more than 700 participants from 15 states and union territory of the country. Here we come under one umbrella to share some knowledge on Android application development by some eminent speakers from industry as well as from academics. Some handsome session will also be there by our students to fill the development environment in a better way. As a coordinator of this web workshop, I must say we can't reach here without getting continuous support and help from our principal ma'am, Professor Dr. Shutabha Mukherjee, our former dean sir, Professor Dr. B. N. Chiraji, our registrar sir, Dr. Shubhash Ushpadam, convener of this workshop, as well as coordinator of technical forum of our college, Dr. Gita Srikhan. Also, I would like to thank Mr. Rajmohan Deshakar, Director of Ardent Computing Private Limited, for associating with us. Now, I would like to mention all the organizing committee members of the workshop and all our beloved student members of Technical Forum. Without their enormous support and help, we can't arrange this workshop. Without wasting more time, now I request our convener of the workshop as well as coordinator of our technical forum, Dr. Gita Khan, to say few words. Ma'am, are you here? Hello. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Chuburik. Uh, um, um, And uh, Anvila and coordinator Ekpoto Hassan sir, to welcome you all in this workshop on Android application development. Today, as a consultant of Ekpoto, this group is not in Arden. Hello, ma'am. Maybe due to some technical problem, uh, ma'am is not audible right now. So I'm just trying to get her. As ma'am is not available due to some network issue, so I would like to request our principal ma'am to elaborate our web workshop. Ma'am, please. Principal ma'am, please. Hello? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. You are audible. Uh, respected uh, Emeritus Professor B. N. Chatterjee, esteemed speakers of the workshop faculty and staff members of our institute, my dear students, and all the external participants. Warm good afternoon to all of you. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you all to this three-day web workshop on Android application development organized by the Technical Forum of BP Poddar Institute of Management and Technology in association with ardent content. Hope all of you are safe and secured during this pandemic period. Uh, as the BPPINT family members know, that in the Institute we have our six forums 
and all the six forums used to organize various activities around the year in normal condition. But I'm very happy to see that even during this pandemic period, when it is very difficult to coordinate any event, all the forums are trying their level best to organize various events to keep the students engaged and for further development of the stakeholders. In this regard, I especially mentioned the name of technical forum. As from beginning of this pandemic, they are planning events one after another for development of the institute, development of its stakeholders. Now, regarding this workshop during, uh, uh, which will be held during this fourth to sixth August 2020, as uh, already mentioned, that you will have experts from industry, from academia, uh, and our faculty members as speakers, and also there will be hands-on session by our students. I'm sure you all will enjoy this workshop and the knowledge you'll gain, you'll be able to apply that in future. Thanks to the coordinators and all members of the technical forum. They really deserve appreciation. Thanks to all the speakers and to Ardent Computed Private Limited for helping us in coordinating with the speakers. Lastly, thanks to all the participants for joining us. I wish the program a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now I uh, request our register sir to say a few words. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. So, I'm audible. Yes, sir. You are audible. Respected principal, ma'am, professor, uh, respected professor BNC, sir. Respected HOTs of various departments present here, facilitators, organizers, and participants. Very good afternoon, everyone. It's my honor to take this opportunity to say something in this platform. First of all, I extend my sincere thanks to our Tech Forum Committee to organize this program in this pandemic situation and give the opportunity to the students to learn about Android application through web workshop. In this critical pandemic situation, this type of initiative basically will help the students to build their knowledge and career. I have heard huge number of participants have already registered in this workshop and will be attending in this workshop. It's really a great achievement of the organizer. Thank you, Ardent Computer Private Limited being associated with us. Thank you, everyone. I wish grand success of this workshop. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, I would request Vavna to take the mic and say a few words about our today's speaker, Mr. Mahindra. Vavna. We have with us Mr. Mahindra Dutta, consultant at Paper Infotech, Eplus of Private Limited, and Arden Computed Private Limited. With an experience of more than 17 years, he has worked on many projects on Oracle DBA, Java Spring and Shrugs, and Selenium Automated Testing, .NET SharePoint. Android app development, Python machine learning, and design. He will be giving us an introduction and discuss the scope of Android app, different API, and their application. 
If you have any questions or doubts, you can put down your queries in the chat box of YouTube or Google Meet respectively. We will be having a question answer session in the end of the lecture and so we will be solving your queries there. So, Mahindra Dutta sir, handing over the microphone to you. Sir? Hello. Uh, can, can anybody hear me clearly? Yes, sir. You are. Hello. Uh, first of all, thank you, principal man, teachers, and other kids, all the faculty members, and all of my students. Uh, thank you and good afternoon, everybody. Today, we want to discuss about Android application. What is Android and what are the different types of applications? My screen is visible to all. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your screen yes, is visible. So, first of all, uh, we want to discuss about the, what is Android. I think all of you know that, uh, what is Android. Uh, nowadays, all the users, all, most of the persons are do everything using a mobile. And Purposes. Android uh, provides us a library for developing a user interactive user interface. We can use a JavaScript, HTML5, we can use uh, uh, iBootstrap, everything which are used for uh, developing uh, uh, an <laughs> interactive web application. We all we integrate all these things in Android also. How? Actually, Android provides a number of libraries. Android support use systems, use programming language. Previously, we are working with Java only, but nowadays, Android in Android. We use a different module, different programming language. In case of IoT also, we automated system, we use Android. Android interact with cloud also. I think all of you heard the name of uh, Firebase. Google Cloud provides us a database, Firebase database. We interact with the cloud also. We, when we uh, develop some automated system, maybe uh, like 
IoT IoT like application maybe from the mobile we want to switch off our switch on and switch off our ACs. Maybe phone. Uh, sorry, a light. Maybe fan. How to do that? So Android provides us different type of libraries. That's why the Android market is booming. The Android framework. Actually, framework provides us huge number of libraries. Helps us to develop advanced and user friendly application. That's why all the users, from a simple user to a CEO of a company, all the users use this mobile. And in different sector, government sector, public sector, everywhere. One is open source. Another thing is that if you think about the costing, it is affordable Android is mostly version for developers that we have we also language Kotlin using Kotlin we develop Android one thing they have different approach there are different standards. Let us discuss about it. Don't think that we only using Java and Kotlin we develop Android. Now, history of Android. It is an operating system developed by Android INC. And they been overtaken by the Google. Android INC was developed in Palo Alto, California in October 2003 by Andy Rubin, Rich Miner, Nick Sears, and Chris White. In 2005, Google acquired Android INC. Google, take this. In 2007, the first version was released by Google and commercial version was released in 2008 and known as Android 1.0. First time it is developed. Step by step, it will update updated the version. I think all of you heard the name of this version. Update, do not clear for you. <coughs> Sorry. Trio, gingerbread, honey, um, Lollipop, Mars, Marshmallow, Nougat, Audio, Pie, and now coming over here. I actually I say industry, our requirement, update the ability different money, different built-in functionalities. Using this uh, easily, we can interact with different environments. We want to interact with uh, cloud. We want to interact with other external devices. We want to uh, develop networking. Like app. So all the things are possible. Why? Android update their resources. And Android provides us different APIs. And I think all of you got it why we learn Android technology because it is a leading, it is leading the global market and device. I think all of you know that and most of the person uh, use this devices like television sets, tablet, Android auto cards, ebook reader, wrist watches, use Android as the operating system. Means that for developing purpose we develop Android. But now sir. Android integrated, sir. yes, yes. Uh, I'm just interrupting you. Sir, can you uh, full screen your PPT? Oh, yes, here. Yes.
We can control this. Don't think that we write all the codes manually. Actually, Android provides us different built-in functions using the Android libraries. And using this built-in function, we can control the different features of the Android. All Android libraries are not only Java. There are some C C industry then you have to develop different types of applications you have to take the challenge and different types of application till now is required for the industry if you develop that type of things after learning android then we say that that is innovative idea so we have to learn android also we have to think about the person's requirement also then we think about some innovative idea. And we have to know the features which are available in the Android. Otherwise, we don't think about it, ki, huh, using fingerprint we can do something. Using image we can do something. Uh, by taking a photo we can do something. We can develop a game using Android also. For developing game, Android provides us a different tools. Obviously, a simple game like tic tac toe etc. develop if the while loop and for loop in a simple Android using simple Android native library. But if you want to develop a specific game, then Android provides us different game development library. That is first one Unity. Gaming with two dimensional and 3D features. I think uh, you, some of you heard the name of the games like Ricky and Morty, Monument Valley 2, etc. So develop that type of game. There are different types of games. Remember one thing. Develop that type of games. Don't think that using Unity, we can develop all type of applications. And remember one thing. Don't How think that if you learn... A native Android, using native Android, we can develop all types of industry required Android apps. Not possible. It is not possible. You have to learn different approaches of Android application also. Later we discuss about it. Another thing, Unreal Engine, attractive 3D graphics. If you want to develop 
again using attractive treating habits it is very good for developing android game using treating habits that is unreal in game like heart at heart at attack lineage etc marmalade another sdk and support c++ languages and also participate to create interesting graphics if you learn a native android application development then you can go for game development also just you have to download this and integrate it into your system then you develop a game also another thing is that app game kit user friendly platform for use coding similar to c++ that if you know c++ programming language then you can develop this and last one it is very and uh, very important and mostly used most the game developer most of the game developers are use game maker studio 2 why they use that type of studio actually here drag and drop feature that is provides to the user using drag and drop maybe you develop using some features like that then you can by drag and drop the features you can develop the game so drag and drop features is available in this studio but remember one thing when we develop android application at that time obviously we use android studio for developing game specially if you need a drag and drop features then we have to use this game maker studio 2 trial version is also available in the internet and you can try for that and those who i think all of you know c++ programming language then you can use app can kit also so android provides us different libraries uh, different game development tools android provides us different apis also what are the apis actually application programmer interface what is application programmer interface maybe think about uh, a okay, maybe you want to pay some amount okay maybe i want to pay the amount to you maybe my bank account is in sbi and your bank account in ubi when we execute the transaction obviously we have to update the amount in the bank server is it possible to direct access the bank server there will be an security security issue that's why they provide us different api i think all of you heard the name the payment gateway for pay something we use this gateway means there is some built in functions just we call that function and this function indirectly interact with the banking server not directly accessing the banking server so using api secure securely we can interact with not only the banking server interact with different devices different cloud environment different database storage etc so android provides us different apis also for analytics Reimagine analytics for your mobile. Data analytics, data analysis is also possible. If you, I think all of you uh, use uh, the COVID-19 data analysis, COVID-19 virus data analysis app in your Android phone. They represent the data. They visualize the data using different types of graphs. How they generate these graphs? How they analyze the data? Obviously, we need analytics. For analytics, API is also available. If you want to send message, and we we and remember one thing: not only the mobile message. Maybe we want to we need a messaging system, offline and offline mode both. How to send a message, offline and online mode. At that time, we use different cloud messaging APIs. and i think all of you heard the name of uh, aws amazon web uh, amazon web service 
This is also a cloud, provides us different API. Using API, we send the message, it's cloud messaging, deliver and receive the message across platform reliably. Sending the message, maybe you want to send the message uh, to mobile, maybe some mail server, maybe some cloud environment, everywhere. Authentication. I think all of you know that how to authenticate this. Okay, nowadays, using fingerprint, we authenticate the user. Nowadays, using my picture, authenticate of my mobile. How? Mobile, analyze this. Built-in functions provided by RESTful API. And using, using this RESTful API, we can develop a very good Android application very easy, not time consuming. If you develop something like that using simple C program, it will take more time. But authentication API is also available just to call the function and we develop application. We integrate this authentication system in our Android app. Real-time databases. There is a built-in database available in Android. I think all of you heard the name of different databases like Oracle, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, SQLite, Postgres, NoSQL, etc. And for Android, there is a real-time database especially for Android that is Firebase. Google Cloud. In Google Cloud, this database is also available. We can use Firebase database also. We can use Oracle, MySQL database, etc. with our Android application also. Why? Remember one thing, Android application or and, and Android mobile, sorry, Android mobile is a single user device. So, if you want to develop something like that, maybe you want to generate or develop an attendance system for your college. Every faculty members use this attendance system. That's why you develop some application and you install it in all the Android mobile. But if we store the data, why we store the data? If we store the data in personal mobile, these data are not accessible by other faculty members. But in case of attendance system, maybe I am a faculty member. I take attendance of any class. After me, another faculty member coming and they take, uh, he also, he or she also take the attendance. But if we store all the attendance details in our personal mobile, then at the end of the day, how to analyze the attendance record of the student. That's why when we develop our Android application at that time, we have to store this data in shareable database. This database shared by all the users means we need a client server architecture also. We can configure this manually also for our personal use. Maybe for a for a college, we can create a local server and create a networking with other mobile devices. When multiple faculty members take the attendance, at that time all the data are stored into the into that server. Otherwise, we can use a cloud database also. Every time uh, when all the faculty members take the attendance, all the data are stored in the cloud database server. It also be possible. And all the functionalities, how to interact with Oracle database, how to interact with MySQL database, how to interact with Cloud Firebase database. Amazon Web Service provides us database also, EC2, name. So, interact with the real-time database also. So, think in this way, which type of applications we can develop it. Storage, obviously, we store the data in cloud also. Not like that if from the app, we can store all the data only in my mobile. Because remember one thing, why actually mobile developed? 
use less memory. We need a portable system. That's why develop this. That's why we can store that data, maybe in the file, maybe in the database. But where we store or create file and database? We store all the things in cloud also, not a personal mobile. Performance monitoring is also possible. Obviously, all of you know that when maybe the mobile is very slow, at that time we check it. For internet connection, we check it, how to monitoring this. All the APIs are available. Don't think that we have to write all the code from the scratch. Remote configuration is also possible. Networking is also possible. And another thing, important thing, after developing the mobile application, how to test it. The test lab tool is also available. Using this test, test lab tool, we test our Android application. So huge numbers of APIs are available, libraries are available, developing game, all the tools, all the things are available. Just we have to know that how to develop Android application. What is the architecture of the Android application? How to write an Android application? If you know that, just all the documentations are available in the internet. Don't think that in a 40 hours training, either 80 hours training, in case of maybe, uh, sorry, I am also, I am, I was also in the college. You don't think that in that 40 hours training or 80 hours training, it will cover all the things. So, why we need training? Actually, that is the starting where you got the information. Then you have to read from the internet also. That is must for every student. And remember one thing, not a single book is sufficient for all the things. That's why I suggest you the internet is the best way. Just read the documentation. All the documentations are available. Don't think that the, some informations are not available in the internet. Some person uh, invent this. No. All the libraries, documentation, how to use this, example code is also available. So Android provides us all the things, libraries, functions, communities, blogs. So easily we can use this. That's why most of the persons are use this Android applications. So Till now, we discuss about the Android. What is Android? Android provides us different libraries, different APIs, different tools for developing the games. And we can integrate uh, the Android, or sorry, we integrate different platform in Android also. Now, we go to the different Android app development approaches. Because it is very important for all of us. Don't think that using any technology, we develop all types of Android application. No. There are different approach. And there are some pros and cons also. So, for particular purpose, we have to use a particular approach. So what are these approaches? I think all of you heard the terms nowadays for cross-platform application development. Flutter, Reactive, IOMI, Framework 7, PhoneGap, many things are there. All are, we all are puzzled what we learn, what we have to learn in this way. But remember one thing. <clears throat> In starting, if you know how to develop Android application, then you can go for any approach. Obviously, you have to know uh, an uh, object-oriented programming language also. I think Java is sufficient for that. Java and JavaScript. And HTML, etc. are very easy. Now, let's see what are the different type of mobile development approaches. All of you say that we want to develop Android app, we want to develop Android app, but how? 
where, when we use which approach for that particular requirement very easily, perfectly, without any error. What are the approaches? Mobile development approaches, native app development, hybrid app development, and cross-platform app development. Now, how to choose a development approach for your mobile app for a particular requirement? That is uh, my idea. Obviously, there are, uh, this is very uh, tricky things and uh, you can chase me easily, but I realize this and draw this diagram. Do you need a mobile app as cheaply as possible? If yes, are hardware functionalities like camera or GPS a must? If that is no, then we go for hybrid app development. But do you need a mobile app as cheaply as possible? No. Are you okay with having limited performance if it reduces time to market? And if you want to use GPS and camera must, then there is the question. Are you building an e-commerce app? If e-commerce app, then we go for progressive app with app development using Angular. But if it is not e-commerce app, but we need GPS and camera. Then we go for Flutter or other cross-platform application. It is also a mobile application developer. And if it is no, are you okay with having limited performance if it reduces time to market? No. Are you ready to have two developer teams working on separate code base for each platform? If yes, then we go for native app. Actually, why? What is the meaning of this? Are you ready to have to two development teams? Because when we develop any Android app using native app, maybe you have a company. You develop an Android app, but you don't know which users use Android mobile device, which users use iOS. So you have to uh, make a publish a notice like that that all the employees must buy Android, but it is not possible. So if you think that okay, we want to develop an application which runs on only the Android device, then we go for a native app. Because using native app, we Develop an application which support only Android device, not iOS, not web. But if you want to develop such an application which support Android also, iOS also, and web also, means or develop only a single developer. Maybe in a team multiple developers are there, but a single team write a single code and we develop Android supportable application from that single code. We develop iOS supportable, we develop web supportable also. If you want to develop an application which support only Android device, then you go for an editor. But if you need you know that's why I write over here, two development teams is not required. If yes, then you go for native app. But if no, then you need to choose from the option. Maybe progressive way cross based on that. For e-commerce app, progressive web app is the best. And it will support the Android. From that application, we develop Android supportable installer also. I think all of you know that what are the android installer.apk file. So in this way, based on the purpose, 
industry use different type of mobile application development approach so but remember one thing we have to start from native because first of all we have to know the basics of android then easily we go for any one of these so what is native app development native app development involves building apps for particular mobile and operating system for part native app for a single for a mobile application only and users access them from dedicated app stores such as the app store i think all of you know that play store if you if you intend to build an application for ios app developers will will use programming language languages objective c or swift and obviously for ios if you use a native approach native app then you have to develop an application for ios separately obviously you can use objective c swift etc in contrast developing for android calls for the programming language just java or perl native app development tools used for ios development xcode app code and atom xcode is in popularly used and for native app development you can use any one of these android android id is not available now android studio or intel ide and these are the example of native apps like rc pinterest ios calculator etc for native app for android android for native mobile development we have for android app development we have to use android studio for ios development we have to use export separately now we go for what is hybrid app development a hybrid app is a software application that combines elements both native apps and web application both native apps it will support web application both support <coughs> hybrid apps are essentially web apps that have been put in a native apps and means we write a single code from that code we develop web version also android version or android supportable installer also hybrid app blend web elements with mobile ones so you create code base using standard web technology we can use uh, for developing the user interface we can use a simple html obviously and nowadays <coughs> we use html5 css javascript etc then you wrap it inside a native container just a moment क्लास standard way technology is using html css and javascript then you wrap it inside a native container means actually we develop just like develop a web application now we wrap inside a native container why because from that code we want to generate a android supportable installer so how it can be possible this is possible in case of hybrid app development means we need android version also we need web version also at that time obviously all of you select this hybrid app development approach not native app if you uh, at that time if you select native app then you have to recruit a team for native app development recruit another team for web development but now 
the age of hybrid app development this this approach is also available nowadays just uh, you need some html css and basic javascript idea only and it is very easy javascript is not so difficult if you know a uh, java programming language then you can cope up very easy now let's see what are the hybrid apps example of some hybrid apps and which tools used nowadays for developing the hybrid app for developing the hybrid app we use ioni apache cordova nowadays mostly use ioni and microsoft visual studio latest version 2019 in latest version 2019 Maybe the size is used, software size is used, but in case of latest version of Visual Studio .NET, in this Visual Studio, all the things using this Visual Studio from by writing a C sharp programming, C sharp is also programming language. Using C sharp programming language, we develop web application also. We develop desktop application. We develop Android mobile supportable application also. and what are the examples of hybrid apps like just watch nhs airbus helicopters so when we select hybrid app actually we need web also android application now we go to the cross platform app develop approach what is cross platform app uh, cross platform app development approach cross platform mobile development refers to the development of mobile apps and that can be used on multiple mobile platform why it is cross platform means we develop we write a single code for a single app and we create android installer from this code also we create ios installer also and windows mobile also that's why i write over here cross platform mobile development refers to the development of mobile app that can be used on multiple mobile platforms maybe ios maybe android maybe windows and cross platform development is the practice of the developing software products or service for multiple platforms or software environments and engineers and developers use various methods to accommodate different operating system or environment for one application or product means if we develop an application using cross platform app development approach then from that code we can generate different operating system different environment supportable application by using by developing a single application that's why and nowadays cross platform app development market is booming okay we write a single code we write a single code developed by a single team after develop this we can generate application android supportable windows supportable any smartphone supportable everywhere we can use and all the libraries are provided by right? what are the tools we use for developing the cross platform app development i think all of you know the name react native very booming market react native and flutter tamadin market is not so good react native i think all of you know that using react we well, actually what is react react js javascript using react with user interface very user interactive if you want to develop a best user interactive user interface user interface means like uh, login window registration form using these forms user actually interact with the application 
Maybe you want to register yourself. How to how to do that? You write programming code? No. Simple users use the user interface. Using ReactJS, we develop interactive, very good look and feel user interface. And another very popular that is Flutter. Nowadays, a Flutter market is booming. In Flutter, actually, we use a JavaScript. And if we develop a cross uh, mobile application using cross platform development approach, then from that single app application, we can create app for different mobile platforms. And what are the examples like Bluemark, <coughs> Insertly, Reflectly, etc. Different app. This is a new thing coming into the market industry. So these are the different approaches for developing a mobile application. So till now what we discussed about it, what there are different libraries, there are different tools for game development, for developing application, we use different APIs. There are different type of mobile app, mobile development approach, where and when we develop, which mobile development approach, what is cross-platform, hybrid, and what is native app development. Now, let's see, I give, let's see some example. Here, actually, I developed some softwares, give you some example. Actually here, this is uh, not my mobile. Uh, all of you, uh, this screen is visible to all, this mo like mobile device, this one is visible to all. Please reply me. Yes sir. This, yeah, okay. okay. Actually, here I use a device, a software. Using this software, actually, I hear my mobile screen into my desktop. Okay. Uh, when I discuss about Android application, that is the software name is App Power Mirror. Actually, it will generate my mobile mirror in my desktop. Obviously, there are different types of available in the market for mirroring uh, your mobile maybe my security is like that okay and here in my mobile I uh, install some example obviously you can develop a simple application uh, like um, maybe restaurant app maybe uh, food booking app here, uh, at first, I want to see you an example. Uh, this is an example of an application where I integrate a machine learning module also. This is an Android app. And using this Android app, we want to analyze the image. That's why, because this is my GUI. This is my GUI. In this GUI, at the bottom, there is a there uh, sorry there is a camera. There is a button switch camera. This one. If we click on the switch camera button, at that time front front camera. Then again, if we click on that, that is back camera. Now I want to here. Maybe I will want to take a picture of my keyboard. Okay, like that. When I capture this, take a photo. Now check that. It will predict that, that this is the output over here. Space bar 97.6%. Means when I take a photo at that time, it will predict the image and it will check the accuracy also how it can be possible it is not possible uh, 
so I can see slides. Now all of you see this. Actually, this is not slide. Actually, I may see, I share my mobile screen. Maybe I take a photo of the pain. Uh, okay. Now capture the photo. And it will predict that skew, di skew driver and paint brush with a photo. Actually, I take the photo, but in my screen, it will not display properly like that. Okay. So, in that way, how it can be possible? We take the image and after taking the image, obviously, we store the image in my device. Then we analyze the image. By analyzing the image, by analyzing the image, we predict that what is the percentage of this. A screwdriver object, screwdriver, screw, sorry, screwdriver, 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 screwdriver object may be a chance of 32% and paint brush may be 16%. Actually, if we uh, take a photo for any computer device, then it will predict most correctly. In case of keyboard, etc., it will predict incorrectly. Because it is developed by my student. And the photo, they test the photo and they create the model using a computer device, keyboard, mouse, etc. So let's see, remember one thing, the development is not important. This example is not important over here. Important thing is that if we develop Android application at that time, not like that if for developing Android just we know the Android. If we go for the industry, when you go for the industry, at that time for different purpose, image analysis, face recognition, even uh, if you analyze the mood of a person from his image, angry mood, a enjoyable mood, how to do that? At that time we have to integrate machine learning model also. That's why remember one thing, in case of industry, industry you have to learn many things. Obviously, all of you are in the college, that is the best platform where you can learn different things. Deep learning, machine learning is also required. Now, let's see another example like that. I, uh, this is an, <coughs> this is a simple application. Actually, where we want to uh, uh, convert speech to text. Let's see. Let's I include this Google tools in my app. This is not a browser. Actually, this is my app. So this one, speech to, speech to text. When we click on that, it will open the app. Just we click on that. Hello. That's it. Hello, how are you? Okay. It will convert it into text. So, here, this is a simple application where we convert from speech to text. And using the speech, if we send any instruction, by reading this instruction, what is this? Hello, how are you? That is nothing but a string in programming language. So using string, we can manage different things. We can call the phone, we can open the phone call also. We can execute different operation by giving the instruction. Just we say something, convert it into text, compare the text, maybe phone call. Then it will open the dialog. So in this way, we can develop 
different interactive mobile application also don't think that this is an application where we convert speech to text but think in this way from that text we go for next big app also if phone dial send message at that time it will open the message dialer obviously all the functions are sorry at the, maybe send you tell send message at that time it will open the message editing obviously for opening the message editing window there is a built in functions we can easily call that so that type of application is also possible and in that application they go here we integrate the google tool maybe i think all of you use uh, uh, google map gps all the things are available using api just we call a function no need to develop all the in the sketch all the apis are available over here just we call the function and integrate these things in our program so in this way we integrate different built in tools why you integrate different built in tools remember one thing android provides us our operating system linux base android provides our uh, provides us different libraries android provides us game development tools android provides us different type of mobile approaches in the same way android provides us different tools also what are this accelerometer when we move our phone at that time it will record all the things what is accelerometer that is nothing but a tool there is a sensor which sends the velocity of the mobile this also possible gps what is gps this is nothing but a tool gps app development is not possible in android hey, sorry it's sorry uh, gps development is not possible using desktop because gps tool is not available in desktop gps tool is integrated in mobile device sensor accelerometer gps camera and nowadays i think uh, all of you know that using android mobile we can check the oxygen level we can measure our blood pressure how to do that so different tools are integrated in our android device and it is very important for nowadays to check the oxygen level in this covid scenario <laughs> so that type of application is also possible we can integrate we can integrate a different tools using built in functions built in apis not like that we have to write all the things google map api is also available in the same way another example image processing is also available just like that i open another application just check this image image only yeah zoom in features zoom in zoom out this is also possible let's see rotation so different types of animation all the things are possible let's see i think all of you see that type of animation in different web application also bounce and i think if uh, most of the uh, developers if you uh see like that always hard for the javascript and this is also available in android bouncing bouncing
Sir, you are not audible right now. Hello, sir. Sir, you are not audible. Maybe due to some technical issues, sir is not along with us right now. So just keep quiet. I am trying to contact him. All are requested to wait for some time. Welcome back, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Ah, uh, actually, there. Sir, you are audible. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, there is some uh, internet issues. Okay, sorry. So, 
Uh, till now we discuss about uh, different types of apps. Sir, uh, yes, sir. My screen is visible to all. Yes, sir. Your screen is visible and you are audible also. Also. Okay. So, uh, just now we discuss about different types of application and using this app for actually I see my mobile screen and I think all of you got it. When we develop Android application, when we learn uh, how to develop Android application, at that time we have to think about many things. If don't think that we only for an Android device we develop an Android application. We think about the huge IT industry and that is the starting. And all the things how to develop an Android application at that time we have to think about Something. So I request every participant to mute okay. your mic. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, I give you some example. Ki when you uh, develop some Android application, at that time you have to think in this way. Ki we integrate many things with our Android application. Now let's see how to develop Android application. Obviously when you develop any Android application at that time you have to install a software and obviously we have you have to install Android Studio. I think all of you heard the name of this application and for developing Flutter there is another, <coughs> another tool you can use that is Visual Studio Code also. Obviously, we have to download it from the internet. If you want to install Android Studio, and remember one thing, when you download Android software from the internet, at that time, maybe the Android Studio size uh, like 600 MB. But when you install the Android Studio, at that time, it will download a huge resources from the internet. So at the time of installation, you have to connect with the internet. Don't uh, disconnect the internet connection. Otherwise, it will not install all the things properly, all the resources properly. That's why <clears throat> if you want to learn how to develop Android application using Android native application using Android Studio. At first, you have to download it, and that is the installation process. How to install it? Connect with the internet, then just double clicking on that software, you got the Android Studio from the internet very easily, like that. download Android Studio, any latest version and remember one thing, 
before installing the Android Studio, you have to install Java also. But don't install the Java version, the upper version 9 and upper version of 9. Lower version of 9. Install the lower version of 9. JDK 9. Download Android. Just download this Android Studio from the internet. <coughs> and you will need Android Studio software. Just wait. Just download this Android Studio. Remember one thing. 64 bit operating system required. Let's see what is the size of the Android Studio. Say 871 MB. But when you install it at that time, it will download more than 4 GB data. Why? Actually, at the time of installation, it will download the resources from the internet automatically and install it in your system. And Android provides us different API version. Later I show you what is different API version. Just download it. Remember one thing, when you install the Android Studio, download it from the internet. When you install it by double clicking on that software, at that time, you have to connect with the internet. And you have to confirm the download data size. It should be unlimited because at the time of installation, it will download more than 4 GB data. And for Android development, you have to install First, you have to install JDK. I write in this way JDK less than 9 version. Okay. Because 9, 10, 11, 12 versions are not supportable in Android Studio. Less than 9 version. At first, you have to install it, then install Android Studio. Okay, Android Studio. This is the installation process for developing Android, uh, for installing the Android Studio. <coughs> and you have to confirm that data size should be greater than the 4 GB size. Next. When you install Android Studio, let's see what are the API versions. When you develop, I think all of you got an idea about it, about it, what is Android, what are the different types of application we can develop, what are the different approaches. In the same way, when we create or develop Android application, Android provides us different API. What are these? Let's see. This is my Android Studio. After installing, after installing the Android Studio, you got your Android Studio in the oh, under the program menu like that. Here, this is Android Studio. By clicking on that, you can open the software. And remember one thing: the minimum requirement. Minimum requirement for sorry that is recommended, not minimum. Recommended configuration four GB RAM that is very important. Four GB RAM recommended. That's why if the eight GB RAM is available in your system, it will be working good. Otherwise, little bit slow, but don't worry. And 
and any hard disk uh, or any 64-bit operating system. And when you install Android Studio, after that, maybe we want to create an Android project. How to create Android project? Let's see. File. There is option new. So file new, then new project. When you click on that new project, at that time it will open a new pop up window over here. Like that. Just wait. <laughs> it's a little bit slow. Later we discuss about the activity. Maybe I select any one activity from here. Then click. Maybe next button. When you click on the next button, obviously it will open a new pop-up window. The applic here you have to provide the application name then package name where we want to store all the resources java resources then save location where we want to save my project by clicking on that tab you can change the location this this tab you can change the location of your application Actually, where you want to save your project, maybe D drive, maybe E drive, maybe in any drive. Then, <coughs> language. Like, uh, in case of Android Studio, here only two languages are available. One is Java and Kotlin. But in case of Flutter, etc., in case of developing the cross platform mobile app development, at that time, we have to use different types of app, uh, languages. So, at that time, we have to use a Flutter supportable resources also. Later, in case of Flutter, we discuss all the things. Just wait. It will a little bit slow. Here, actually, it will display the API. I want to uh, discuss about the API now. What is API? Different uh, Android versions are available. For every version, Android create a API level like this. This one. API 15, that is ice cream acha. I want to the API API 15, API 16, API 17. The API 15 represent the version ice cream sandwich. API 16 represent the Jellybean version Android 4.1. API 17 Android 4.2 Jellybean. API 18. So different APIs are available over here. And remember one thing, maybe here I want to develop my application using API 15. And at that time, let's say it will display your app will run on approximately 100% of devices. What is the meaning of this? Means if we develop an application using API level 15 version, means I using ice cream sandwich, so at at that time, this app runs on every Android device. But if we change the API level, let's see, that is the market strategy generated by Google. 
that the, your, your app will run approximately 99.2% of the devices. What is the meaning of this? Actually, if we develop an application using higher version, then this application, maybe we develop if uh, the application using 17, then this application is not run in any lower version Android devices. But if we develop any application using lower version, this application runs on any upper, upper version devices also. And you have to go through the different resources also. For all the API, all the resources are not available. If uh, later when you are working with map API, the map API available in API level 23 and upper version. In API level 15, 17, in this API level, Google map API functionalities are not available. It's not working properly if you use this. So remember one thing, don't think that Okay, when we develop an Android application, as our habits, I want to use updated version, not like this way. At first, always a think about my requirement or your requirement when you develop some application based on the requirement, based on the functionality, based on the purpose, based on our stage based on our uh, posting we have to choose a particular api version we have to choose a particular mobile development approach i think all of you got it don't think that we develop android application using only upper version of api android API. no never do that so, when we develop something, at that time we have to think in this way. Now, let's let's see. Suppose we develop, so I think all of you got it, what is Android, what are the different Android APIs, and what are the different mobile development approach. I show you some program example also. Now, let's see. When we develop, Actually, at first you have to start from the native app. Then you go for Flutter and any high-end app developer. In case of native app development, actually we develop an application using with languages, Java programming language, and XML programming language. At first, all of you have to start from here. Using Java and XML, we develop Android applications. And why we use XML? Actually, in case of native Android app development, in case of native app Android app development, how to develop user interfaces? how to design user interfaces. At that time, we create XML file. Maybe you want to create your login window. How to do that? <coughs> Maybe this is our heading. Uh, Maybe login heading. This is username, username, maybe this is our text box, maybe like that, then maybe password, and maybe there is a text box, and there is a login button. So how to design that type of GUI? In case of native app development, we use XML programming language. But don't think that it is very difficult. 
it is just like a uh, just like html by drag and dropping the controls we can design very easy and how to develop user interfaces these are the user interfaces how to develop this user interfaces using xml maybe that xml file name is login.xml okay so for developing user interfaces we use xml programming language xml language in case of native app development but remember one thing after entering the username and password maybe here i enter my username you 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 and maybe password is like that ttt after entering the username and password when we click on the login button at that time after clicking on the login button we have to authenticate the user how to authenticate the user obviously at first we have to retrieve the user input values from these two text boxes then we have to check the file maybe database etc if the username and password is matched then we authenticate the user and open the dashboard otherwise if the username password is not matched then we maybe we want to show the message the wrong username password where we write this code for authenticating the user for writing the authentication process obviously there are different authentication process is also available previously we discussed about it the firebase authentication cloud service also available but where we write this process codes in our application obviously for writing the process for writing the business process we have to use a dot java file maybe the file name is <coughs> login oh, sorry login process dot java <coughs> in the login process dot java actually we write our business process and from that login dot java actually if we required we interact with the database also. that is maybe our database this one may be our data Database. And when we click on the button, actually it will all the things are handled by the business process. So remember one thing: when we develop any application, at that time obviously we have to develop multiple user interfaces. It is not be possible uh, create an application using a single user interface. for developing a full fledged application we have to create a multiple user interfaces obviously for processing the multiple user interfaces we need multiple java files so what is an android application actually android application is a collection of native android application not flutter and cross platform a hybrid in a and uh, next session may you have a flutter session also uh, at that time uh, discuss about the flutter but in case of native app development this is a collection of xml files and java files now how to compile the program how we develop how we create a more android supportable installer obviously android provides us a run time run time
compiler or debugger run time and it will provides us this one delegate virtual delegate virtual machine so android provides provides us a compiler debugger also and android runtime support all the core java native native android core java part and this delvi virtual machine actually compile the program debug all the things and generate an apk file i think all of you know that dot apk file is the installer for our android app how Delgrid virtual machine works. Actually, Delgrid virtual machine, there is a Delgrid cross assembler. Because from the Java class, at first it will generate. I think all of you know that how to compile the Java file. After compilation of the Java file, we got word dot class file. Who generate this dot class dot class file? Actually, in Delphi virtual machine, a coincise version of JVM is executed, and JVM generate the dot class file from all the dot Java files. After that, dot class file and other components and sorry, XML file from these files. It will create who done, who generate the dot class file. JVM is available. Not JDK JVM works over here. A uh, coincise version of JVM integrated into the Delphi virtual machine. And this JVM generate the dot class file bytecode from the all Java files. Then from the XML. And dot class files. There is a Delphi cross assembler provided by all the things provided by Delphi virtual machine. <coughs> Delphi cross assembler with assemble, not assemble, generate. It has generated multiple dot x component dot x component multiple. Maybe when you were working in your uh, computer at that time, you see it, maybe sometimes it will generate a single x component, but internally it will generate it may generate a multiple x component. Who generate these x components? Actually, there is a Delphi cross assembler, and from that X component, actually we create a dot .apk file. That is the installer of Android application. So. When Android developed this Delphi virtual machines, for means after developing the Android resources, uh, obviously we need a developer or compiler. That's why a Delphi virtual machine developed. And JVM is also available over here. JVM generated the bytecode for every Java class. Then. Uh, uh, there is a Delphi cross assembler available in the Delphi virtual machine, and this Delphi cross assembler actually generates the .dex component. From that .dex component, actually it will build an APK file, and this APK file actually the installer over here. 
just copying it in your mobile device and you can install it, execute the program. And when you write, develop any Android application, after creating a project, it will create a Java file and XML file. This is <coughs> This one is the XML file and let's see these are the components available in the palette. There's a common text view, button, image view, text tab, text view, plain text, password, buttons, widgets. There are different types of button, image button, the call of your heart and name of this control, radio group, radio button, double button. By drag and dropping this control, we can develop the GUI. And all the controls are defined as a class. All the components are defined as a button, defined as a class, text box, defined as a class, radio button, defined as a class. All the things are defined as a class. So remember one thing, Android provides us huge resources. Just let's see, just in this way. This is our text view. I want to delete this. This is the component tree. Using this component tree, we easily design and user interface. Let's see a simple example, how Android provides us different resources and we use all the resources very easily. Let's see an example. Maybe linear layout. Later we discuss about it. This is linear layout. Maybe it takes you because just drag and drop it. Text view. Now this is the design window. Maybe we write over here in maybe login. Then text size the book. Without writing any code, we design our user interface. Login. So all the properties are available over here. Gravity, EFG. There is a property, gravity. Very easily. Center. You can set the color also, text color also, just like a Visual Studio developer. So in that way, a drag and drop login, then maybe another text view, drag and drop this, maybe the text is username, username, obviously, uh, just I show you an example, simple example. 18 SP, 24 SP. Now drag and drop a text box for entering the username values. Actually, this is the component tree. Using this component tree, very easily <coughs> we track the user interface. This is our text box for entering the name. Then maybe another drag and drop another text view. Then then maybe password. This one is password. Sorry, password. Maybe text size is this in this way very easily we design maybe password text box then we need a button just drag and drop the button sorry drag and drop the button over here maybe the display is login Sign in in this way. 
<coughs> maybe text size like that and let's see when we drag and drop uh, sorry when we design our user interface uh, by drag and dropping the controls we will get a two part a design part and text view part just click on the text view it will generate type some more file automatically and just like html code just if you go through that you see that it is you can control these things very easily after designing this we have to write our process in the dot java file so after developing user interface after uh, processing it how to create a pickup there is a option there is an option build build a pick a just click on that when i click on that automatically it will compile and debug the program because there is a process going on gradle build running means it will process it and generate the apk file and actually this apk file we install in our android system and execute it so this is the android today in this short session we will discuss about what is android what are the features provided by android there are different types of apps there are different approaches of android application development android provides us different libraries android provides us android provides us different libraries different tools and very easily we can use this so i think all of you got it now tell me anyone have any question just wait now write your question in the chat box uh, sir uh, a student from youtube Krishnendu Chatterjee asked a question that what are the problems of using versions greater than nine of JDK? Actually, uh, nowadays uh, JDK Java is developed. Java 12 version is available in the market. Uh, in case of upgraded version more than eight, Java language. approach java programming approach is different actually in this updated updated version java use a scripting language feature that's why this updated version of jdk is not supportable by android studio okay that's why when you use uh, android application in case of native android app development at that time you use uh, lower than 9 version 9 10 now 12 version is going on and in this upgraded version actually java use scripting language approach huh? that's why these are not uh, supported uh, android studio even i am not use this but i read the documentation Okay, these updated versions are not support JDK also. Maybe a new version is coming and something updated version is available. Just we have to wait for that. Okay, got it. Thank you for this answer. Answer the next question is that uh, what is Gradle asked by Shumpi Pal? Acha, what is Gradle? Because so when we develop Android application. i told you that we based on our requirement we think about the api version when we develop an android application maybe using fifteen i develop an application now our next requirement may be seventeen so when we create a new project using api seventeen the api seventeen resources 
are not available in my program so how it will because think uh, because think in this way if we install all the apis at a time how much resources it will take what will be the data size that's why based on our requirement it will download apis it will download built in apis maybe uh, now we create a simple project here we are not using any firebase cloud so the firebase cloud is not required for that project but if we want to develop a such project which uh, where we record this firebase obviously we have to include the resources that's why when we create our project first time based on our requirement it will download all the resources and store it in the gradle that's why uh, this is called syncing process and remember one thing first time when you create your obviously after creating the project we develop different user interfaces different java files but first time when you create a new project at that time internet connection is required must at that time based on our requirement automatically it will download all the resources in our, in my project otherwise annually it also be possible but it is problematic step by step you have to include all the data resources okay okay sir thank you and the last question is that uh, asked by the paul infinity uh, shown in the youtube chat box is what is delivery what is what is delvig delvig actually delvig is a just in case of i uh, if if all of you know the java for compile and execution we use java here virtual machine what is java virtual machine it is why it is virtual machine actually programmatically logically it will develop by the developer and java virtual machine provides us the functionality to compile the java programs generated by bytecode java c compiler and interpreter which will execute the bytecode and gives us the output in the same way when we develop our android application using java using xml maybe i told you ki in other high end programming language sometimes we use html javascript etc after writing the program we have to generate apk file generate a uh, installer for other mobile operating system how to create this installer obviously we have to compile the debug compile uh, and debug the program after compiling it will generate the installer who done this we need another machine obviously it is not be possible debug the android program using jvm that's why android developers develop a virtual machine the virtual machine name is delvi virtual machine and delvi but using delvi virtual machine actually we compile and debug our android program and generate different mobile supportable installer file in case of android we generate apk file in case of ios ios supportable installer file that's why we need a delvi virtual machine and this is provided by android all of you got it regarding delvi uh, regarding delvi there is another question by remo banerji uh, that is what do you mean by or what is the can you explain the function of delvi cross assembler by remo banerji and sujani banerji actually uh, delvi what is the functionality of delvi cross assembler देखो व्हेन वी क्रिएट एंड्राइड एप्लीकेशन एट दैट टाइम आई टोल्ड यू की फॉर फॉर नेटिव ऐप एंड्राइड ऐप ओके फॉर क्रॉस मोबाइल प्लेटफॉर्म मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन डेवलपमेंट समथिंग डिफरेंट इन केस ऑफ नेटिव एंड्राइड ऐप डेवलपमेंट वी डिजाइन आवर यूजर इंटरफेसेस यूजिंग वर्ड यूजिंग एक्सएमएल फाइल व्हेन वी दिस इज फॉर लॉग इन एक्सएमएल लॉग इन डॉट एक्सएमएल and for every user interface we need for java file maybe this is uh, login process dot java 
or it also says that there's not enough space but i have enough space in my pc oh i got i got it sir with this emulator i always get exit with code in one error actually uh, uh, silvia islam what is happening over here emulator is also a virtual uh, sorry emulator is a virtual device actually maybe we develop our android application using android studio at that time how to test my program at that time we use an emulator and when we configure our emulator at that time we provide a specific ram size and hard disk size it will not use your pc hard disk or ram size check the emulator there is a configuration you can set the size ram size and hard disk size of your emulator you have to update this then you uh, you can overcome this error and remember one thing actually it will not emulator never directly use all the ram size and all the hard disk size which is available in your pc not like that it will create a virtual machine that's why in the emulator configuration you have to provide this and another question acha how can i contact you <laughs> i don't know whether the acha I, i see my number this is my number 8774092511 this is my mobile number <coughs> you can Talk with me also, sir. Which Android SDK supports C plus plus? As I discuss you or any question, sir? Sir? Or any question? Hello, all of you hear me? Ah, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Okay. Like, uh, now to take the mic. Sorry, sir. Thank you so much, sir. For your valuable okay. time. Thank you thank so much, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, we present Sapan, to you. Sir, can you present? Yes, sir. Something. Sir, can you stop your presentation? Yes, yes, yes. Sir. So we present this to you as a token of appreciation for your valuable words in this web workshop. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thus, we end our first day of the three-day web workshop here. Thanking all of you for participating in this workshop. Looking forward to see you all in tomorrow's session at 3 p.m. Links for feedback forms will be sent to your WhatsApp group. You must fill the feedback forms for all the three days to get the certificate. Thank you. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you everyone.